Hey guys, Joe here, or you can call me Coffee McCofferson, and today we are taking a look at the Taurus G3. How good is Taurus actually doing these days? Thanks for checking out the channel. If you've never been here before, you can see other videos up there in playlists, as well as just kind of search the channel. There's over 700 videos, and I'd love to see you watch them all. Now, what we have here is the third of three pistols that I was shooting tonight, or filming, pardon me, not shooting, including the Beretta and the Sig Sauer, and I want to get this one done. However, this one's not quite as important or urgent because this one is mine. If you go up into the Jiminy Shoots playlist, you'll see I did a video, a tabletop on the Taurus G2C, which is this guy's little baby brother, as well as a first 100 round video, which has done surprisingly well in views. Although being demonetized, it's made me like 31 cents. But when I saw the G3 get released, I was like, that's pretty damn interesting. I want to check that out. Because if it came out as good as the G2C or better, I was going to be very interested. Now, I will tell you, I've had nothing but good luck with Taurus pistols, and that's why I'm willing to just say, hey, I think so far in my sample size, I've never had a problem. I know that some folks will go out and say, oh, my Taurus broke three times after I used it. I've sent it back a million times. I hate them. I'll never use them. You're welcome to your opinions. Again, I can only base my opinions on my experiences. When they introduced this pistol, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, they came out with a Glock 45. Because in essence, and again, I'm not comparing quality, I'm just saying in essence, this is a Glock 45. First thing we'll do is safety check it, we'll drop the magazine, and we will open the slide and see there is nothing in it, so we can safely take a look at it on the outside. This is a striker fired 9mm double stack pistol. It qualifies in the full size ish. It's not a 5 inch barrel so it's not like a duty style pistol. However it is on the larger size. The reason I compare it to a gun more closely like the 45 is because the 45 has a very similar size to it as well as a lot of the equipment on this gun. This comes with two magazines. One is a 15 rounder, the other one, and a 17 round magazine. Both made by Mechgar. They feel pretty quality. They have the yellow followers. They look decent. This one does use a little bit of an extension, which can move pretty easily. It doesn't really make any sense. They should have just made that a single piece, but maybe they wanted to put this magazine in a different firearm at some point. Who knows? But with this one, you get 17 plus one, and it fills up. As you can see, though, even the 15 rounder fits my hand perfectly. Externally, it's very, very similar to the G2C with a few changes. Number one is this has front and rear slide serrations, whereas the G2C was kind of fluted at the top. This one gives you the extra grippy surfaces. That's why I'm not calling this a Glock 19. I'm kind of comparing it more towards the 45 because of what it comes with. It does have a 1913 Picatinny rail in the front, so you can mount some lights and lasers. I've tried some O-lights, and they fit great if you want to get some... Olights or even one of these firearms, you should check out my buddy's store, libertyarms.us. Uh, I don't like to put links in the descriptions because it instantly demonetizes the video, which is annoying. This is not an ambidextrous pistol, neither was the G2C. This one is more of a right-handed shooter's gun, however, as a lefty and righty ambidextrous. I do find that I can run the controls pretty easily, especially when the magazine is loaded. When it's empty, obviously the slide release is very stiff does have memory notches here and here so that when you're holding the pistol you know where to put your finger instead of on the trigger which is the worst place you could rest it because then you develop a bad habit on the side here on both sides you have a thumb memory notch it doesn't really work for me because I have slightly bigger hands so I need to actually hold my fingers like this with my thumb on top of this knuckle. I'm so used to 1911 riding the safeties that it kind of creates an issue for guns that don't have them. However, this one having it, it's okay, but I can still accidentally hit that slide lock with my thumb. Pistol is striker fired, which is one of the benefits of it. It does have double strike capabilities, so double action and single action. It's pretty handsomely finished. The top, I'm not sure what the coating is. I will say that after a day in a holster, I noticed that it transferred some leather onto the slide. 
that's weird, but it might not happen in a nylon holster or something. But other than that, it doesn't seem to have worn it. It just it transferred some of the leather onto the finish. It does have a stainless barrel, a uh, cold hammer forge barrel, pardon me. And other than that, it's pretty, pretty much identical to the previous gun. The sight picture is pretty good. It is a three-dot arrangement. Uh, this is adjustable for elevation and windage, and the front sight is screwed in from the bottom just like the previous version. Lakeline sells a set of fiber optic sights for this gun for 50 bucks. I may just do the front sight and leave the rear sight because it doesn't bother me. I know some of the early guns actually had a U-notch paint like the Glocks have, but the two dots in the rear seem fine to me, and I don't want to go the effort of, you know, putting in that one. As you can see, it does have the trigger safety, which is good. It also has the manual safety. I never used the manual safety on the G2C because I trusted the trigger safety on the gun very much like a Glock, so you can leave it in the ready-to-fire position and trust your trigger finger basically trust your trigger not to go off on you and get a good holster the trigger safety does exactly what it's supposed to i cannot fire the pistol unless i actually get all the way down on the trigger safety and in double action it's such a heavy pull that you can't accidentally fire it unless you're really doing something dumb let's talk about the trigger pull trigger pull on the first shot is pretty linear it kind of Builds, stops there at a wall. I guess it's kind of got the striker back as far as it's going to go. And then a little bit farther and click. Reset in double action mode is long. It's about halfway out, which is unfortunate because if you're dry firing it, you're not going to get a accurate depiction of at the range firing because if you're cycling the gun with more bullets, you're going to get single action for your follow-up shots. Speaking of which, your single action shots... Trigger comes all the way back here to the wall, and then you just add a little bit of pressure, and it breaks. Pretty crisp. You can feel it. You can hear it. Those are two major things. The reset is extremely short, which I did appreciate. Bing right there. Again, about halfway out, but plenty short enough to be completely usable. And there you go. For a striker fire trigger, it's pretty good. Obviously, there are better triggers, and I'm sure Lakeline sells a trigger kit. But for a daily carry, this is perfectly fine for me. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. It's pretty plain. It's a cardboard box. Again, I don't mind that. It means they put more money into the guns. You get your second mag. You get your warranty information. You get your handgun information. And you get your gun lock. Very typical. Perfectly fine with that. I will say aesthetically, I prefer the 15-round magazine because it fits flush. And it still fits my hand well. And quite frankly, if you can't get something done in 15 shots but you can in 17 shots you have a way too many shots problem let's go ahead and field strip it now so we drop the mag and we open the slide verify nothing in it put your finger in there put your finger in there put your finger in there obviously you visually check it first i've been racking the slide and opening it up continuously in the video so yes i know there are no bullets in it but i wanted to show you at home so you know better than to just start you know pulling the trigger on a gun you haven't checked safety message out of the way here we go glock takedown style i've heard people complain about it i think it works just fine it's just you have to know to pull your slide back a little bit just a little bit release it pull your trigger push your slide off I really don't see how that's a very difficult thing to do. I've heard people complain about it on the Glocks as well, and it's not that hard. Let's go ahead and pop the recoil spring out. It is a double spring, and it is captive, so that's nice. So you don't have to worry about that going thing. In fact, one of these days, I'll take a picture of a tile that's above my desk that has one perfectly round circle and one wedge circle from 1911s deciding to uh, launch their springs and the plungers. Taking the barrel out, you do have a breech lock browning tilting action barrel, which is very common. This is a four inch barrel, which to me for a carry piece is an optimal length that allows for a larger firearm. And when you have giant, you know, banana crunching hands, you should uh, have a slightly larger pistol. It feels more comfortable to me. And I daily carry it in 1911, so. Yeah, looking inside of the slide, it's pretty nicely finished. It's not quite as nice as that SIG we looked at, but way, way 
way better than they used to be back in the 80s and 90s. Looking in here, you have your striker here, and you have your safety disconnect there, as well as your extractor. They're right there, Siamese, next to each other. Obviously, unless you have the trigger safety pulled, it won't release that and drop the striker. Not going to take the striker out. We've all seen strikers, but it is just a striker plate system like the Glocks. I like to mention that this is very much like a Glock because you're getting a lot of Glocky stuff, if I can put it that way, for not Glocky money. So yes, they're copying Glock, but they actually did a damn good job. Underneath the barrel, kind of like the Glock 48s, they have a vent down here, though I'm not quite sure why, because obviously that is when the gun fires backwards, but maybe it's for some sort of pressure release. Let me know in the comments if you know that a little bit better than I do. Reassembly is very easy because your gun is field stripped and it has captive recoil springs. Take your barrel, drop it in. Make sure that it catches with the top of the breech and locks in place. Take your guide rod. You will want the fat end in the hole. And then you just bring it in and you want it to come down to the second pedestal, not the top one. If it's up there at the top one, the spring will be at an angle and the slide will not connect with the frame. All you have to do now is go ahead and take your gun, put it back together, and bingo. Bango. Bongo. So what's my first impressions of the gun? It is very much like a G2C. It just kind of gets you right up into the perfect size for me as a carry piece. If you're a bigger person, it's going to fit a little bit better than the G2C. If you're a smaller person, the G2C would still be an excellent choice. In terms of the fit and finish, it's as good as I've seen from Taurus in a long time. A lot of that has to do with the fact that management is located in the United States. This gun is still built in Brazil, but I'm sure eventually they may get better tax breaks or something that will encourage them to move manufacture up here. If Taurus continues to make guns like this and like that one 1911 I took a look at and the PT-92s and just the whole lineup minus the Spectrum, which we don't talk about anymore, they have a bright future. They've come so far in such a short time that I'm extremely impressed. Now let's talk price. It's something I don't like to do, but I can because this is such a common pistol. Now, some of you are gonna say you can get this pistol for under 200 bucks. If you can, I wanna know who you are because I wanna buy all my guns from you. On average, you're gonna pay about 250 bucks for this pistol. That's what this pistol lists for at my buddy's store. That's what you can buy it online at his shop at. At $250, this thing is an impressive price deal. The Security 9 is more expensive, the Smith & Wessons, even the cheap ones, the old SDs were more expensive. A lot of guns are more expensive than this and don't give you as many features as this gun has. So I encourage you, if you're looking for a cheaper gun to have in your truck, be a cheap carry piece, and something that if it winds up being as reliable as the G2C could actually become a primary carry piece, you need to go to your local store and put one of these in your hand, especially if you liked the G2C and you want something that just fills your hand a little bit better. Sorry, I'm on a lot of cough medicine and uh, Benadryl, so I might be a little bit loopy. If I've said anything twice or three times, leave me a thumbs up in the comment for it. Let me know if you have one of these pistols, what your experience has been, or if you plan on buying one. I will be taking this one out to the range next week, even though it's only going to be 30 degrees out. I may try to sneak out on a day when it's warmer. We'll see what happens. However, that may be the only day I can go out, and then I will put 100 rounds through it, maybe even more like 300 rounds, just to break it in right away, and we will have a report on that. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't. Use my Amazon affiliate link. That way I can use some of my kickbacks and my Amazon and my AdSense to purchase things for the channel so that we can check stuff out. I do things other than guns, so feel free to look around the channel for those. And keep your eyes out and your ears out because Coffee McCofferson is going to be doing some other stuff here as well. So I'm going to get out of here. Hope you guys have a great day. And as always, I'll talk to you later.